What's going on everybody? Today we're gonna to jump straight into the topic of signs you're good with money. So the inspiration behind making this video was actually the fact that I had this coaching call last week and the person was doing just so well financially and we were just going back and forth about like a, a certain plan. You can actually catch the video, the full video over on my Patreon account. But basically the synopsis of it is this. She was doing extremely well with saving, with investing and everything else. And she wanted to know what the best plan of action was when it came to moving out of state for the first time. Very scary thing. And I think she knows that she's doing well financially, but it did dawn upon me that a lot of people actually don't even realize sometimes the signs that they're actually good with money. So I just wanted to cover that real quick in this video. Plus, I thought it'd be a fun video to make. I haven't made a video like this. So the first sign is you really don't care what other people think. And I know that doesn't sound financial at first, but I promise you I'm going somewhere with this. I mean, you have to think about the amount of resilience you actually have to have within you to really not care. I mean, real life, not care what other people think. I'm talking when your friends want to go out and you say no and not caring what they think because you said no. Not caring if they think you're stuck up or lame or boring. Like you, you just you're doing you. Like you don't you don't want to do that tonight. You don't want to go out tonight. Not caring what people think is making well into the six figures, but you're driving a 2010 Toyota Camry because y'all know some people out here really think that you're not making money unless you're pulling up in a Mercedes or a BMW or some type of foreign vehicle. And you know, not caring what people think. And I think this is the biggest part is being able to focus on something, a goal, like getting a degree or focusing on your career or focusing on your business and really not caring what other people think, not caring what sacrifices you have to make right now because you know in the future that's gonna benefit you greatly. And once you've obtained that level of discipline that you've built within yourself, you don't let anybody derail you, not anyone's thoughts, not anyone's opinions, nothing. So when it comes to your finances, you're not buying things to appease or impress other people. You're doing them for you. When you're going for your goals, you're doing them for you. You're driving an economy car without any regard to what anyone else is thinking. They can think you're broke all you want to, but you know how much money you're making. You know how much money you're saving. You know you don't got no debt. You know that your money's growing on the side. That's a sign that you're good with money. You don't say yes every time your friends wanna go out because you need to be around people. It's like, no, like, Sometimes I'll say yes, sometimes I'll say no. And they'll probably come to expect that most of the time you might say no because you might have a goal to reach. You might not wanna go out and spend $100 every weekend, maybe one or two weekends out of the month, but that's about it. And the reason this is a sign that you're good with money is because it's a sign of self-control and discipline something that most people don't have and you actually do need a decent amount of this to be good with money you could have thousands of dollars in your bank account but refuse to spend a certain portion of it like you might say well i'm keeping at least 60 percent of this and so along that topic the second sign is you spend a lot less money than you make and the reason i say a lot is because a lot of us spend less than we make but we might have ten dollars to our name when it's all said and done at the end of the month i'm talking about when you have a lot left at the end of the month. I'm talking to the point where you have several hundreds or into the thousands left over at the end of the month. That, that's just sitting there chilling, that you can do anything you want with. That takes a few things. And this is the reason why this is a sign that you're good with money. This takes understanding what your overhead is in comparison. And if you don't know what overhead is, overhead is just simply the bills you have to pay every month. But in addition to that, you have to understand the relationship between that and how much you're making every month. And it's, and it's actually like, it might sound simple, but it's really not that easy to do because a lot of people live paycheck to paycheck. A lot of people actually spend more than they're making just to survive. And they have to basically survive from their credit card or taking out loans or whatever the case may be. And that's no judgment at all. That's just reality. That's how life is. And that's the world we live in right now. And some people are just in unfortunate situations that's gonna take some time to get out of. And that's just part of the process. And then there's those of us that spend less than what we're making, but we don't have as much as we'd like to have at the end of the month. Like 
you can barely do really anything with that amount of money that's left. And what you wanna do is get to a point where you have a lot left at the end of the month that you can then do whatever you want to. And that's why I made that video, how to master budgeting and saving money because this puts you into the situation where you're paying yourself first, you already prioritized how much you're gonna save and everything else comes last because the biggest thing is this, you want to spend what is left after you've already saved your money and that is how you do it. But back to what I was saying, it takes a skill set to even get to that point that I was just talking about because, because first of all, your bills have to be cheap enough, like your rent, your car, your insurance, and everything else that comes with every single month that you pay for, that has to be in control. That has to be below a certain number that you actually get paid in order for you to even have a chance of having anything left at the end of the month. And those are what I like to call fixed expenses, like expenses that definitely happen for sure at the same time every single month. And then there's your not so fixed expenses like your grocery shopping, your gas, your runs to the mall and things of that nature, nights out, whatever the case may be. Like that's the part where you really have to be in control because let's say your fixed expenses don't really cost that much in comparison to how much you make, but then you go and, and splurge on everything else. Now we have a problem. Now it's hard to even have anything at the end of the month, purely because of spending habits that were built over the years. And it's extremely hard to break spending habits. That's why videos on YouTube about how to save money are so popular because it's really that hard to break certain habits. And another reason that this is a sign that you're good with money is that you're not giving in to lifestyle creep because as we know, as the years go on, for most of us, our pay goes up, even if it's just by small percentages or sometimes it's by big percentages if you get like promotions or something you do on the side takes off or something like that. Because once you're making that money now, it's easy to say, oh, now I can get that Tesla. Now I can go get that townhouse across the street that's three stories tall that has a loft at the top. Now I can go on these expensive vacations. Now I can eat out every day of the weekend, every single week, every month. And then before you know it, that little bit of extra money that you're making now, and the reason I say little bit is because it's typically a lot less than what you're gonna imagine it is, but that little bit of extra money is gonna just dissipate in the thin air. And you're gonna be looking like, where did it all go? Your decisions, that's where it went. In my opinion, the best way to do it is this. Let's say you went from $70,000 a year to $90,000 a year. This is the definition of the person that I just described. This right here, like this is the person who spends a lot less than they make right here in this example. Let's say you went from 70,000 to 90,000, but when you had 70,000, you were already spending less than what you were making, maybe even a lot less than you were making, but now you make $90,000. So now instead of increasing your bills and upgrading your life, you're like, nah, I like my lifestyle. I'm gonna stick with how I was living on my $70,000 salary and all the extra money I'm making from the $90,000. What I'm gonna do from that is, I'm gonna put it into savings and investments. I'm gonna start a college fund for my kids. I'm gonna start a Roth IRA for myself. I'm gonna put a little bit more money than I would have been putting in my investments. That is how you build wealth. And that is how you get to the point where your money is really working for you. And that's exactly what I mean. You spend a lot less than you're making because you're, you're just living off of your old salary. So you're pretending like your new salary doesn't even exist. And what you're doing with that non-existent money is you're putting it in places that benefit you and your family in the future. And I think that is an incredible thing. And that is a for sure sign that you are good with money. And I just wanna say this before I get to my next topic. The main reason I'm pointing these things out is because there's a lot of people who are doing these things, but they have other goals or they might feel behind financially. And if you haven't seen that video that I just made, go ahead and watch it. I will link it up here. I don't know why I pointed this way, but sometimes because you hold yourself to certain standards and you have certain goals, you might not even realize that you're good with money. So I wanna be here to show you exactly what it means to be good with money and what the signs are. And this right here puts the cherry on top, actually having a plan for your finances. And there's a few variations of what a plan can mean for your finances, but just for instance, having a budget, that is a literal definition of a plan for your finances. This is how much I plan on spending every month. 
This is how much I plan on saving every month. There's also plans that look like this. Based off of how much I'm saving every month, this is how much money I plan on having saved by the end of the year. And then it's, you know, having plans for even your bonuses. Like I always say, never expect to get bonuses because some businesses have months where they underperform and as a result, they don't give out their bonuses, which is understandable. They have to do what's best for the company, right? But let's say if I get my bonus, this is how much I expect to get. This is what I would do with it if I got my bonus. If not, this is what I would do. Uh, this is how much I plan on investing every single year. And I, I expect that as every year goes on, I'm able to invest $5,000 more per year. This is the type of thinking I'm talking about. And I think my favorite one is the, the first one I've ever done myself, which is the five-year plan. Where do you want to be in five years? And you can apply this to every aspect of your life, but specifically when it comes to this video, I think about career or business or whatever it is that pays you, right? What I think makes all the difference of the world is when you put standards on yourself because let's say you didn't create your five-year plan, you don't think quite as in-depth, and I don't believe you would get quite as far than you would if you actually did just go to plan everything out. But if you just don't plan, like, you're just kind of chilling like you don't really everything is kind of up in the air you're just going with the flow and if that's what you want to do that's perfectly fine but for those who really want to better themselves and really improve in life and get to where they want to be you can actually see the light at the end of the tunnel and you see your goals for what they are i recommend create a five-year plan every five years you can even revisit it and make adjustments to it every year if you want to because sometimes you might progress further than you think you would and a lot quicker and the reason this five-year plan is so important is because you're not just thinking about your career you're thinking about the money that comes with the career progression you're thinking about your savings goals you're thinking about where you want to live do you want to live in a really nice apartment or do you want to live in a really nice house it's all up to you what car do you want to be driving by this time? What kind of person do you want to be by this time? What kind of professional do you want to be? You know, your five-year plan might be, you know what? Uh, my five-year plan is working for five years in this job that I really don't like that much that pays pretty decent, but is paying for, let's say, 80% of my college. So I'm working and going to school. And by the end of this five years, I should have my master's degree. And then I can move on to a different job in the tech field. Now I'm making double what I was making. You get what I'm saying? And, and you know, this level of thinking is planning because you have to have that type of skill. You have to plan, you have to be able to plan for your future and plan for disaster at all times. And when you're creating a five-year plan, it puts your mind in a situation where you actually have to think about things that you never otherwise would have thought about, at least not to that capacity. So the first sign, which is not caring about what people think, is a sign of self-control and discipline. So the second sign of spending a lot less money than you make is being very calculated in how you think about what your expenses are going to be and having that capability to happily live below your means while you build your wealth on the side. And then the third one, which is having a plan for your finances, because you could do all of that, but if you don't have a plan, you won't go quite as far as you would than if you did have a plan. So financial planning is a big thing like you want to be able to intelligently plan for your retirement you want to be able to decide how much you want to invest and how much you want to save you're going to want to plan for how much is your wedding going to cost how much is your tuition going to cost if you plan on ever moving out of state how much is that entire move going to cost so really signs you're good with money goes back to how your mindset is and how you think having these three traits are very good telltale signs that you're good with money you might not be where you want to be yet, and I, I don't think a lot of us are, but that is a very good sign that you will get to where you want to be. Just having those three things right there. And if you want to learn more about being good with money, I made an entire series last year about everything you need to do to be good with money. So definitely check that out. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. I definitely enjoyed making it. It was a lot of fun. I knew this would be a fun video and it's a really different way of thinking and it's a different type of video than I made in a very long time. So I hope you liked it. Hope you got value out of it. Leave a comment down below if you enjoyed and also, put video requests down in the comments. Anyway, that's the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryant and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth. So you can control you, control your finances and control your life. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Stay cold.